send a comment or give you a recharge card that I got. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Tech Buys where we give you all the news and updates as it happens in the tech space, the news, the updates, the analysis, the statistics, mm-hmm. all the sisters. <laughs> that's what that's what they say. <laughs> anyway, that's what they say. I am um, I I remain on Monday. I've not changed my name, as I usually say. And I will not be doing uh, this episode alone. And uh, with Dami. Hi guys. Dami. Good evening. Happy holidays. How's your week been? Long, stressful, Lagos is yeah. But yeah, it's been good. But you work from home. Even so though. So which Lagos? Even <laughs> though. <laughs> mental stress of living in the state you know. yeah true living in the country not just the state anyway <laughs> as i said earlier this is tech bite we give you the news the update and we're having a conversation uh we're going to focus on the cbn naira policy the aftermath of the cbn naira policy what do we do next and we have two financial an- financial analysts in the house um if you want to know who they are and you want to join the conversation you have to wait we have a new segment where we'll give you all the news as has happened in the past week that's from sunday to today and uh, dami will be taking that but before then we want you to know that this is a um, tech by 31 and uh that's, that means there are 30 more episodes and that you will need to stream if this is your first time so please engage with it any way you can then where can they find the um, other episodes let me just say with a long story. It's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Apple, Spotify, Google Podcast, YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, everywhere. RSS. You should start rapping. Mm, mm, mm. You already in studio anyway. Right. <laughs> just start rapping. DJ okay. Ma, give me the beat. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's it. Engage with it. Share, like, subscribe. Especially if this um, any of the episodes um, have offered you any value now let's go to the new segment yeah. and uh, dami please do us a favor all right uh first on the list we have Ghanaian uber and boat drivers who have um, come out to to say no or express their displeasure their, their displeasure in the digital transport tax so the government yeah. made a tax right it's called digital transport tax and it took effect april 1 all right the and the drivers are saying, oh, this tax is putting pressure on our ability to earn. So drivers of ride dating companies like Uber and Boats in Ghana have, you know, say no, we don't want this tax and, and all of that. So the tax is contained in a new ride dating guideline for Ghana drivers. It's called Digital Transport Service Guidelines. All right, and um, according to section 4.4 of the guidelines, all digital transport se- service operators, that is Uber, Boat, and Yango, as well as the other ones who are available, shall remit an agreed upon Patrick fee to the DVLA. So DVLA is Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority. These people will remit an agreed fee to the DVLA for each completed trip on a monthly basis. The current Patrick fee is one Ghana CDs and you know otherwise revised it shall be remitted no later than 10 working days into the following month. so for every trip they take they'll be remitting one kind of service that's so if you take besides the other taxes that's beside the other taxes I think, like, so if you take 100 trips in a month you're paying like 100 services. for uh, them to be complaining it means it's so much yeah i think this you mentioned that uh, it's it's um, stifling their, uh, their ability, ability to earn. To earn. Yeah. So that means this is so much. Maybe they have other taxes they are already paying. So why is the government taking this yeah. too? And they are, so it's two pronged as well. In the same vein, they are also saying, oh, the people who have been calling for regulation in that space yeah. have been are one of the reasons why this law is coming into effect because now the government is seeing them as a union. Mm. So mm. I mean, you have to pay yeah. and then this and all of that compared to before when they were just freelancers. And, and things so uh, we hope the government uh, listens to them maybe revises or you know and it's, so i think table. i think some of the problems with um, some of these policies and regulations is that the government does not even explain it just uh, or the government okay now you have to pay consult. exactly they don't consult they don't sit with uh, the people that are going to affect it just go on okay we we think this will work this is it, and, and they just give it to everybody takes effects one week after <laughs> 
All right. Um, Google is the next news for today. Uh, this is kind of like a good news. All right. So Google plans to stop loan apps from getting user personal information yeah, on Play news. Store. It's good news. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so Google has so it's been in the works for some for some years now. Google has been talking about suspending some apps, yeah, taking away some things. Been, but I think it's yeah, it's taking it a step further now, and it's saying, you know what, every app that is a loan app on Google Play Store would stop that app from having access to the um, users information like photos external storage videos contacts exactly. so location call logs <laughs> exactly and they don't start to harass people start calling, calling their members of the of their family friends yeah. and all of that you know just so that they pay back the money and things like that um so google has said this is this will take place in may it will take effect in may so that is kind of like a good news it is i just want to, i just want to ask is that if, that system of calling people on the person's phone is it really effective do people really do people, does it really push uh, it's that culture of trying to shame people into doing something nigerians are shameless okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> i just say that <laughs> <laughs> i did say that so yeah now you talk up i think it's one thing that the apple system does apple mm. doesn't allow you access all of those things that's like very few lenders Mm. are available on app store mm. probably just one or two that are available Apple's in nigeria app yeah. store is a more serious platform they don't allow you access google all of like those details open source. google used to be open right but just now google is taking it there. google is taking it serious and all of that i mean and for nigeria beyond adhering to that policy from google digital lenders also have to adhere to the limited interim regulatory registry registration framework and guidelines for digital lending 2022 by the federal Com Petition and Consumer Protection Commission FCCPC, mm. and just this week FCCPC approved 173 digital lending platforms. Lot, People are borrowing money. You. Ah, that's a lot. 173. <laughs> if you want to see the full list, go to technest24.com. We have it there published, so you can check who is certified to borrow money. So you don't from. Have to go and start borrowing money from people that would bring dog to your house <laughs> to harass you. <laughs> okay <laughs> all right um so this next news is kind of sad it's it's not kind of it's sad actually Good um yeah cash App found out bob lee was stabbed to death in san francisco this week hmm. um so he was stabbed cash App founder and he's also the chief product officer of cryptocurrency company mobile coin bob lee was murdered in san francisco in the stabbing that took place on tuesday and we, it's interesting because many of his friends is is such an easygoing guy that if it comes to it getting violent, we rather let his things go. So it is quite unclear why why this happened. But somebody mentioned that he also complained about the crime rates in San, in Francis San Francisco. In San Francisco, hmm. and it's and within days, you know. He was stabbed to death. Yeah, and he said, uh, while after being stabbed, he was trying to reach out to bystanders to help, but nobody, nobody mm. akined or listened oh, to him, know. and everybody just left him alone until he died and all of that. Uh, I he said the US, the and he lives. had criticized the San Francisco stabbing crime rate and all of that before before he was stabbed to death. Uh, we are our thoughts are with his family, friends, friends. and and everyone. Uh, and yeah, users of the cash app. Mm -hmm. hopefully it doesn't really affect so much uh, amen yeah all right afdb has approved 525,000 grants to create a, to create a digital app of african fintech companies all right the 525,000 dollars will support the operation operation of online digital app to serve as a repository for knowledge on fintech entities across the continent the grant was funded by the Africa D Digital Financial Inclusion Facility. Uh, it was also integrated by the FDB Group, all right, together with its partners, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Other partners are Ministry of Finance of Luxembourg, Agents Frontier the Development in 2019, and the Ministry of Finance and Economy of France and the Women Entrepreneurs Financial Initiatives. How is that entire? Okay. <laughs> 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 all right so the digital will be i mean will be done 
in a strategic partnership between Africa FinTech Network and Center for Financial Regulation and Inclusion. Uh, this is a good one for the finance, uh, the FinTech sector, startups and finance sector in Africa. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Uh -huh. We need billions, but this is a start anyway. <laughs> what do you need the billions for? Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Bitcoin platform shut down. Coinbase. Coinbase is restricting African users. FTX also shut down last year and all of that. And, you know, Demi Tokpe wrote an article about it. So you should check it out. Technest24.com again. Yes, check it out. Yeah. So he tells you what you should do now that all of this are happening to the crypto space in Africa. That, that brings us to the end of our news around the world. Uh, we hope you had an amazing and insightful time with us. Thank you. If you want to read more, there's so much more. You go to technext 24 com yeah thank you dami now we go to the conversation of the day uh yeah. maybe before we, we go into the conversation let's just recap for the people who are just joining us now okay in case they're just joining us let's just do give you away you okay know? <laughs> we would also uh first Ghanaian uber and boat drivers decry you know the sudden and forceful digital transport tax of one ghana cities on every chance transaction or every trip they do in a month yeah. yeah uh google has also made a move to stop apps from accessing you know vital personal information of users loan apps. of loan apps personal loan apps so talk about things like photos storage videos Contact. contacts location call logs loan apps will not be able to access this from me anymore also cash app founder bob lee was stabbed to death in san francisco AFDB approved $525,000 grant to create a digital hub for African fintech companies. And then Paxu, the prominent crypto exchange peer to peer platform, uh, shut down this week and it has over 1 million users who would not be looking for another crypto exchange to use. Hmm. That means so nice. <laughs> 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 that means so nice, you know, recapping um, the news. Uh, thank you again, mm -hmm. Dami. You can say it again. Uh, so the conversation for today is the aftermath of the CBN Nara policy. And as you said, we have um, two people who are going to join us. Now, so so the CBN implemented the policy last year, October 2022. Mm -hmm. And it said it wanted to, um, you know, stabilize the value of the Naira and um, conserve foreign reserves, which actually lost a lot of money in the last three months. And as many other policies, there has been significant impact on businesses on people i mean it, up to today i still see a lot of people at the banks and when i pass it's bank, like, cute. why do you have one million people in front yeah. of the bank people are looking for like what are you looking for and it has also affected the economy the policy has affected the economy with some sectors experiencing challenges such as reduced access to foreign currency and increased cost of imports of course if you don't have foreign currency if you don't have fx um, you're going to be paying more for imp um, imports um as the dust settles, um, now that they've opened up, um, they've said banks should, should bring back the old notes. Yeah, and, and the Supreme Court, our old notes. Supreme Court's rule that the old notes should remain legal tender till December 31st. Um, the big question now is what next? What next? Kubana. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, our conversation on Tech Vice today seeks to explore the short term and long term impact of the CBNRA policy on the nigerian economy and to discuss possible strategies that can be adopted to mitigate its adverse effects on promoting economic growth and development now to do this we have two people as we have said that more than a million <laughs> times uh, we have one elvis christopher who is a highly skilled product a uh, growth executive with core interest in open banking payment and direct card routing with experience spanning almost a decade with two tier one banks and two global fintech companies. He strongly believes Africa is the next frontier for financial tech innovation. Amen. Amen. Tumiche Omole, um, Oluwa Tumiche Omole is a financial analyst and CFA charter holder. Interesting. With over five years experience in consulting and the banking industry, mm. his work revolves around offering advisory services to capital market institutions, corporate entities, banks, multilateral financial institutions and government agencies hello elvis hello to michi hi good morning good morning hi morning good morning good morning, How's your morning, good morning going? everyone going well we're going quite well it's going, it's going fine it's going okay. fine 
Um, it's the Easter, it's the beginning of the Easter weekend, so everyone is in a relaxed state right now. Yeah, mm. happy holidays. True, relaxed. <laughs> so we should be home to relax. I don't know why we are here anyway. But we are here, you know, we, we need to have this conversation. That's why we have a couple of questions for Elvis and um, Tumishi. We'll go to the first one. Um, so the last time the central bank, um, you know, revised um, or redesigned the Naira was in 2014 when they changed the design of the Naira note, 100 Naira mm-hmm. note, you know, just to celebrate the Nigeria's centenary. Yeah, centenary. And then on October 20, 26, 2022, the CBN announced the introduction of the redesign of 200 Naira, 500 Naira um, notes and 1,000 Naira banknotes. Um, the governor, that's the CBN governor, Godwin, Emi Fieli <laughs> said the resign was uh, due to request from the federal government and it to enable the CBN to take control of the Naira in circulation. They did that. Manage inflation, combat counterfeiting and ransom payments. That's kidnapping. Mm-hmm. And in light of that, Tumishe and uh, Elvis, do you think the CBN Naira policy was necessary? considering the economic challenges facing Nigeria. Thank you. Um, uh, to be honest, the, the intention was perfect. The intention was a very good one. Um, this is still a country that has a lot of cash use. You know, cash is still king in the country. So the intention was fine. However, I think the implementation and the timing was not uh, was not so apt. Um, looking at the time when they were having two different things at the same time. So on the side of uh, 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 making sure that the, the use of alternate channels and digital channels is more adopted by having this cash crunch within the banks, within POS and ATMs, and then redesigning the Naira, which now created that shortage. I think uh, uh, th- that confidence of executing those two strategies at the same time, in the light of the upcoming elections, uh, the timing was not perfect. The intention still remains a very good one. Go to places like uh, Kenya, where in Pesa and Telco led uh, financial services is very prominent. Um, they've done very well. Their GDP has moved forward. But coming here in Nigeria, having to uh, to to know our own system, know our own people, in light of the economic challenges we're even having, the timing was not so okay. But the intention was okay. Hmm. So, don't take that. Okay. Okay. So. Um... I absolutely agree with all this on this point, right? So um, the intent was good, but the implementation was undesirable, right? So what was the cash policy about? It was about monetary control, removing counterfeit notes from circulation, and then mopping up illicit funds that were supposedly, you know, acquired by bandits or corrupt politicians, right? So the objectives are undisputable but the implementation manner, right, was something, you know, left um, undesirable, right? So if you look at um, the circulation of funds, according to the CBN, there's about 3.2 trillion naira in circulation, right? And, and there's just about 500 billion naira sitting within the banking system. So you have a lot of money outside of the banking system. Remember that the the, the, the the idea of having the monetary authorities to have stability, right, in, in currency. And so it means that if the CBN tries to implement policies through the banking system, right, just have just roughly about 20% control, right, this policy cannot really hold water, yeah. So the idea was to mop up the funds, have more control, you know, over the cash circulation, and then be able to implement policies that can combat things like inflation, unemployment, and the like. But the timing and the implementation strategy was wrong. Hmm. Hmm. Time okay. and implementation. Time and implementation, yeah, very important. So, talking about the implementation now, because of the implementation method, we saw the effect of this policy i mean on the surface level however but we saw it (laughs) (laughs) we saw it people were on the queue for hours businesses that didn't jump on the financial inclusion you know getting banks account and all of that for several days they couldn't sell because people didn't have cash to buy yeah (laughs) and eventually everybody had to move and all of this but you still see queues you still see people lamenting we bought naira 
as yeah, well. Yeah, we're buying it. With thousands of Naira yeah. <laughs> as well. So, 5,000 was 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw all of this on the surface level. So in, in your own word, uh, in, in your own understanding and expert insight, Michi, um, what is the short-term and long-term impact of the CBN policy, especially on businesses and the general public in Nigeria? Um, okay, thank you for that. Okay, so in my opinion, this is my opinion, right? So I think um, CBN largely underestimated the cash needs of the average Nigerian. The average Nigerian needs cash by goods and commodities needs it to you know transport themselves to work so the cbn really really underestimated the uh, uh the cash uh, uh needs. so in the short term it largely affected the poor and the smes the sme businesses were crumbled there was no cash for them to transact right um it affected poor people especially the unbanked who could not do transactions so you have situations where we have people in the urban centers like Lagos having to buy things and then send down, you know, or try to get cash, buy cash, you know, like you rightly said, and then send down to their family members in the rural communities, right? So um, it, it generated, so in the short term, it generated significant short term costs, right? For small businesses, vulnerable households, right? And it caused significant liquidity and cash constraints. For those that depended on this day for on cash for their day-to-day transaction, right? But from on the short term, from a positive standpoint, right? Because what things I said are negative, right? It sort of you would have seen that it increased the um, number of people that started to use digital platforms because they had to find an alternative to transact. So, mm-hmm. for example, you you drive into a sports station, there's no cash, then you see that most of the attendants had opened digital account i don't want to mention any this so let's like a marketing any brand right that open digital accounts where you can just pay even if you don't have cash so it created that uh, it helped to then drive that financial inclusion strategy right on the positive side right and then looking at it on the long-term effects for businesses and the general uh, um, public so analysts would most likely agree right that Redesigning the Naira, right, will sort of decrease the inflationary pressure, right, that we are currently experiencing, and also sort of reduce the insecurities, which were transactions basically done on a lot of on cash, on cash basis, right. So reducing, redesigning the Naira, and then having to mop up a lot of cash that were outside the banking system means that the central bank can use things like a monetary policy cash reserve ratio in the bank right to sort of be able to implement policies that would decrease inflation right and then also still economic activities stimulate economic activity basically and then the long-term uh, impact that i see is that the cbn is going to sort of advocate for the use of the in era that was launched in October 2021, and then it transitions Nigeria from being a cashless economy to more of a cashless one. That's the long-term impact I see. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, so um, I would just like Chris um, Elvis rather. Sorry, <laughs> I like Elvis to you know. So uh, to be sure, focus on the, uh, the impact of businesses. I would mm-hmm. like Elvis to you know focus on the the impact on the people, the, you know, the general public. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. So uh, and I'll come from. Um, the IT technology perspective, right? Um, for so long, you know, I've been in two banks and two fintechs. For so long, the push for use digital channels, use alternate channels, it has not yielded the most desired fruits, right? So they've been pushing all these things. Banks have been saying, we have mobile apps, we have uh, uh, digital bank accounts, we have e-commerce, use it, we have cards. And uh, it didn't just stick. But, you know, this direct push from the CBN, um, created that uh, that rush, and one thing that that we noticed is we now found out that even for most of the banks, the network infrastructure and architecture couldn't hold it. Um, mm-hmm. Some people have created apps, and you know, say the capacity for the people to use that apps is like maybe fifteen percent, twenty percent. But now about 50 60 percent had to rush in to use the app, and you could experience a lot of downtimes during this yes, whole process. True. 
and uh, and that's the short-term effect we can see and it has made even banks and, uh, and fintech scale up their uh, technology stack scale up their infrastructure because going forward if you are driving more people to use more alternative channels more digital channels one thing that has to be sure is that your channels have to be strong they have to be capable they have to have less downtime and more uptime to just take in that crowd that is coming into the system in terms of the people uh long term there's been so much doubt now built up in their minds just this little cash uh, uh truncation we saw pos uh, agents raising up the charges for pos or cash transactions to over 100 percent 150 percent so even within the system there's less trust people are saying now that if they are ever to get to a point like this they don't even trust that the partners so all the va- down uh the the, the 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 value chain of of, of the digital ecosystem so the pos operators uh the agent the mobile money they are not even there's no belief in the system that they were able to run things effectively and not overcharge them uh in terms of long term i think we still have a long way to go uh one thing that's clear in the minds of people now is that we can't just depend on cash uh this one may not have worked successfully but going forward we may still see this type of policy creep back again so that uh, idea is already built up in their minds that we have to be connected to some form of alternate channels we have to be connected to one form of digital channel so that we can just continue business as usual when uh something like this comes up again thanks yeah interesting yeah. i wonder if people are still are going to go you know if there will be increase in the number of people using um digital uh, banking, banking apps over the next few months right over the next few months because cash <laughs> is now back <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes the M- national bureau of statistics that's the mbs uh, reported that um, fdi in nigeria you know fell by 33 percent in 2022 and uh, that means we had uh, 90 percent from 2008 90 percent reduction from 2008 in fdi 90 <laughs> percent so in 2022 it fell to 468 million dollars and uh, that was since its peak uh, of uh, 4.7 billion in 2008 as i said that was a 90 percent drop um, so in light of this development you know as financial analysts what are the potential implications of the cbnr policy for nigeria's international trade and investments in 2023 You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give a few thoughts, then I'll allow to Mishik jump on this. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'll say this. From the eyes of, uh, of, of the diaspora, from the eyes of people abroad, investors abroad, they see two key institutions as something that holds a, a, a state together. The Apex Bank, which is the CBN, and then the judiciary. One thing we can get from this Naira redesign policy is that we saw that there was some mismatch, or let's say disagreement between those two institutions. And that didn't build a lot of confidence from the people abroad. Of course, you know, uh, Nigeria as a country is still uh, 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 positioned to receive foreign direct investment and the foreign, di- uh, foreign direct flows into the country. But when you see uh, that crowd of people uh, uh, stagnated, people are not able to get cash. The CBN is saying one thing, the Supreme Court, which is the uh, judiciary, is saying something yeah, else. That does not just build confidence. And moves like this kind of, uh, will I say, makes people just become less uh, enthusiastic about investing in nigeria because they don't know what will happen it makes them less enthusiastic about you know putting in their funds in here because by the time there's no agreement that concord is not there between those two key institutions there's always problem i'll like to make sure speak on it uh, uh more okay thank you Elvis. right he, he made really valuable points the which i absolutely agree with. so um there's something about investor sentiment, right, that you cannot separate the Apex Bank from, right? The policies that the Apex Bank makes, right, would definitely impact investor sentiment, particularly around, you know, the economy of the country in terms of stability, right, monetary stability. Now, like he rightly said, the CBN, the Apex Bank, the monetary authority, expected to be autonomous and independent right made a decision about resign policy and then it seems like the uh, um, the government and the judiciary system did not agree with it so it sends um a negative signal to the international community right so um one of the potential implications uh, we could see uh, and couple the fact that you know 
it was during the election period, which typically you see a lot of FBI flows out of the country. It, it was just, um, like I was saying, it was just bad timing, right? Really bad timing. So you typically see investors move funds out of the country during the election period because they move to safe havens. And then look at what is happening in the international space, right? You see the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States increasing its um, its policy rates. You see the yeah. Canadian uh, uh, Monetary Authority also increasing its monetary rate. And if Nigeria is a lot risky because of the perception created that the uh, Monetary Authority is not independent enough to make decisions, right? And then there was a lot of political instability because of the elections. It's just very difficult for you to have a lot of flows out of the country to safe havens. And then for Nigeria to then, re to then retain this investment, what they would typically then have to do is now increase the benchmark rate, right? Which you know puts more pressure on us, right? It makes it makes it just makes it's just really really bad timing you know, on on the side of um, of the CBN to have implemented that policy at that point in time. So it just puts more pressure on, on Naira, puts more um, pressure in terms of rates to attract investors, coupled with the fact that even offshores, by offshores, I mean offshore banks, right, that typically do transactions with Nigerian banks, we are not even willing to give uh, um, foreign currencies, right, that's the loaders and other foreign currencies, to Nigerian banks. So Nigerian banks had no access, right? Or no access or very little access to foreign denominated currencies to even carry out transactions. And then that has its own crippling effect on businesses that require these foreign denominated currencies, right, from the banks, you know, to import and carry out their own transactions and you know, make their own uh, um, trades. So overall, it's impacting our investments, impacting businesses, right? It's definitely going to impact the GDP. You see the impact on the GDP. You see the impact on inflation too as well, right? Because if the cost of you getting foreign denominated currency increases, it means you're going to increase your your cost, right? And, and that's just passes on to the final consumer. So all around in terms of trade, in terms of investment, it's just a very negative impact in Nigeria. Hmm. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, I, ah, I I like that that, <laughs> that that word because it leads me to my next question. The fact that you say it has lots of impact, negative impact on the naira, on the economy, GDP. and GDP and all of that. So, what steps can the Nigerian government take to alleviate this this effect this or shocks. this shocks <laughs> or this impact uh, on the economy, and then also for the people? right uh that have gone through this old cash problem and are going through not have okay. gone through are going through the old cash through. problem <laughs> yes okay should i should i go ahead yes, 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 yes. um so one um first thing i would say is that it has happened already right now what would speak to to you to just um um Sort of make sure that this kind of situation doesn't happen so now i think the the people in government or the creators of power first have to admit that they've made a mistake in implementing mm -hmm. this policy and then look for jurisdictions yeah. where this kind of thing has been done right and then take lessons from there and you know use that you know applying it to the nigerian setting based on you know our own social economy you know, uniqueness, right? So they have to be humble enough to admit that they've made an error, right? Um, two, the government should, to a large extent, allow the CBN to be autonomous in making decisions. It's very conflicting when the CBN says one thing and then the government says another thing. So it was very interesting for me to see that the CBN would say, we are facing out these old currencies. And then I was seeing things around governors of some states saying, no, this currency is valid in my own state. It was just a very funny scenario to see, right? So one thing that has nice. to be done is that governments should, governments should stop interfering, interfering to a large extent with the policies of CBN, right? Um, two, there must be the government must um, be able to 
make sure that all stakeholders, right, must be brought into the conversation, right? The banks have to be brought into the conversation. The fintechs have to be brought into the conversation. How do we do this redesign and, you know, do a plan, a phased implementation? So it's not a three months, four months thing. It's probably a 24 months thing where, you know, as the, as the owner is, you know, being deposited in the banks, it's being mopped up by the banks and the CPN. Wow. It's not allowed to come back into the system. The new notes are pushed back into the system. So you can't expect a population of 200 million people where just probably less than half are, are banked, right? To be able to mop up the old funds within the space of three months is very unrealistic. So the government has to set realistic expectations, try to you know, be, be minimal in interference with the policies of, of the CBN. Right, and I think that would actually really help um, um, the Nigerian populace with the issue that had happened. But the truth is that it has happened. People have felt the impact, and there's nothing you can really do about that anymore. It's how to be better going forward that you should actually, you know, look out. And I also think that the government should start. Uh, it shouldn't be left to CBN alone. The government should start promoting the use of digital, digital platforms. So the inner is there and it has had very poor adoption, right? Yes. Um, there, are, there are other digital platforms that you can use, e-wallets that have been provided by banks. You know, there has to be a lot of sensitization because this knowledge gap has to be closed, right? You don't need cash to do all your transactions. In fact, most of the transactions you need to do, you don't need cash. And there are lots of platforms that are available. There are lots of fintechs springing up in Nigeria, getting private equity funding. So there's a lot of potential as to what the government can do, right, to prevent this kind of situation from happening again, right, and prevent uh, um, um, Nigerians from suffering this very uh, uh, um, not needed hardship that you know, had to go through, right. Thank you. Yeah, okay, not needed. <laughs> so there's a point want I, want to, I want to ask. Um, I, I, can the government really humble enough to actually admit that they made a mistake? And um, you mentioned um, yes, a sensitization where the government, you know, sensitizes people, um, you know, use. Mm -hmm. But we also experienced um, a lot of hardship from those banks. You know, transactions are going through you reaching out and them responding. So a lot of things really happened. I'll, 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 I'll leave the question open. I'll just like um, Elvis to first uh, respond to the question, the same question. Okay, thanks. Um, in fact, uh, Tumisha just took the words right out of my mouth, right? So first, um, we have to be on a journey to rebuilding trust with the system. That's the first thing. So many people don't just have trust with anything the government is doing. So, um, like, like, like Tumisha said, this is a country of 200 million Nigerians, right? So if you do something, our, some part of the country is saying, oh, this policy is just for you, or this policy is just for me. Uh, uh, these other people have been disenfranchised. So that's the first thing we need to go on the journey. The government has to, of course, address this trust system that has been built in have an all-inclusive conversation so we saw them saying no more naira we don't want cash in the system anymore um use alternate channels use digital channels and then the pricing of digital channels still remain the same you can't say don't use cash use bank transfers and then bank transfers is still costing exactly the same thing what people will mm. do for some you know forward thinking companies will say if we block down this alternative for you the next one we are putting Pouch poaching to you should be at least less expensive so that you can even drive the inclusion to use it. Today, transfers is still at 50 naira, 25 naira. Um, I, I know some fintechs had to go in and say, you know what, we're taking out transfer charges for this period. We are taking out uh, 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 deposit charges for this period just to make sure that you don't have that much uh, uh, concern while we are forcing you to use that digital channel. So I think the conversation was not all inclusive. Uh, in a strategy like this, you should have the banks in there, you should have the fintechs in there. Every player in the digital payments and collections value chain should be there, present, so that it's all inclusive. If cash is not here, the alternative channels they are giving you is something that is strong enough, less expensive, and something that you can rely on. And those are two things I would like to put out. The third one is 
uh, there's a lot of experimentation that goes on. Uh, this is a country too big to experiment. If you don't mm. see the full scope of what you're trying to achieve, I think the experimentation should be, be reduced because um, between two of us, or uh, all of us in this in, in, the, in this chat, some people really suffer the effects of this style of redesign. It was dire for them. I saw videos of one old man, I think he went to the bank and was crying over 80s, right? Some of the Gen Zs and millennials like us probably just were affected a bit, but some people yeah. in rural areas, in the villages, they suffered, they struggled, some didn't eat for days. So these are the things that we should look at when we want to bring out policies. Don't experiment. Make sure everybody is on the same page. Cater for even people that uh, have less capacity to even cope with this your uh, with, with your policy. And then, so it, the, the 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 outcry will not be as large as it was. We saw people even jumping fences, bank fences. Those are not <laughs> things that look good when people see the country. So, uh, and the last is just unrealistic timelines, even for budgeting session even for tax project project managers they have timelines they set to tax so uh having three months for everybody to just leave cash and jump on the digital bandwagon in three months was very unrealistic and we saw how they quickly just retract retracted that whole idea because if this had continued more banks would have been burnt more casualties would have mm. would have surfaced mm. and then the insurance people will have a lot on their plates but i, I think in, in the four things i'm putting forward there's a journey to rebuild trust and we must start there. We should stop experimenting, make sure we see the full scope of what we're trying to go into, have an all-inclusive conversation. Everybody should be on the same page because we're trying to serve the people and do what's right. And then in terms of timelines, put timelines that are realistic and then we'll, we'll have, a, we'll have a, good, a good run. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the crazy thing about this whole thing was even the banks the little channels wanted us to jump on yeah. we're not ready for that way like i said they were not ready they were not ready they... i can't count number of field transactions and reversed reversals i had to push with my financial that's why a particular uh, fintech app became so popular right. <laughs> it even recorded uh, 30 million um, users um so this last one we've seen we've discussed we've talked about some of the solutions we've talked about the problem now the last one is a what next in mm -hmm. question so what lessons can be learned from all of this the cbnr policy and what has happened after that and um, what policy recommendations you know would you give to the federal government or the stakeholders in the system you know so that we prevent this kind of shock in the future hmm. okay so i would um go first i'll go first on that so i would just like to say that i think that a lot of policy makers right are out of touch with the reality of the average Nigerian. And mm -hmm. when they make these decisions, they are not making it, I don't think they are making it based on accurate data, right? So um, that's one thing I think. They should be humble enough to admit, you know, you ask that question, will they be humble enough? I think that's something they have to reflect on if they really want, you know, to win the trust of Nigerians and then to make the banking system, the banking system of which, you know, affect our economy around our capital markets because banks are big players within the capital markets so before you can see all your capital markets to grow it means your financial system must be strong enough to handle you know uh, 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 the things that you know the, the level of trust that is required right to be able to grow your economy so i i believe that there are numerous lessons to be learned from from the um, cbn policy for one communication was poor right um I feel that there were times where there were rumors and CBN, you know, took too long to put out circulars to address the public on what their standpoint was, right? It was almost like whatever under institution says is your business, what we are doing, that's what we are doing. <laughs> and there was no clear communication from the from the APEX bank. So the timing was wrong, that's another lesson, right? Um, the timing was wrong as well, you know. So but Overall, I, I would not really fault the idea behind the policy, right? I would just fault the implementation strategy behind it, right? And um, what I would say is that to prevent similar shocks, the CBN is just just needs to collaborate better with relevant stakeholders, you know, to achieve an aggressive implementation of the policy, you know, which would bring more relief and ensure stability within the system. Right, you can't have a 200 million population, right? And then you 
do things without really being very strategic or how you're going to implement it, even down to the rural areas. You have to be very strategic about what you're doing. So um, I think that um, to guarantee the, the circulation of new notes, right, the banking institutions must act quickly. You know, like you said, the infrastructure of banks really could not cater for the influx of transactions that we experience right during the crash and um, the cash crunch. But banks need to be able to act quickly. There were lots of failed transactions, there were lots of delays in responding to customers, and this continuously led to the breach of trust between banks and their depositors. And when you are in the banking business and you lose trust with your depositors, you are going out of business, you know, we start, right? So um, it is very necessary to solve the problem of inefficient network services, you know, in financial um, institutions, right? And then to lessen the strain on the financial system and make it easier for, you know, people to transact and convert old Naira to new Naira, you know, the central bank, you know, must work with printed companies. Right, I would always keep emphasizing that, that you cannot think about, you cannot talk about advancing the economy or the financial system and not talk about technology. You cannot excuse the importance of fintech companies, right, in you know in driving this uh, um, financial strategy that is, that the CBN is trying to achieve, right. And then all the possible money banks must demonstrate commitment, you know, to you know providing support services. We saw that. The CBN these things around Monday to start the banking, but was it enough? No, it was really enough, right? How many staff? How many? To be honest, how many people can cater to? How many people are, are staff in a branch of a bank or CBN that can cater to those number of people that want to change, you know, their old Naira notes? It's very, very unrealistic, right? So, and then I believe that CBN should have partnered better with the Ministry of Information, um, Ministry of um, of Finance, right? create better awareness, right? And then just push out the idea that there's, there's the cashless ways that you can transact. There's the inaya that you can adopt. I would have typically thought that the CBN would even use this moment to push the inaya a lot. And I didn't see anything around that, right? So uh, he just, you know, put the question out there that, you know, what was truly the intent of this, of this uh, 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 cashless policy that the, the CBN was trying to to, you know sort of achieve so yes yeah, so i think those are the lessons that i believe that cbn can learn from that and the recommendations to prevent uh, um, a future future shocks like this yeah thank you miss you'll take that yes uh i'll just uh, do a, a small wrap up so uh before now uh we used to just see the cbn have the banks as their extended arm right so um want to get something done we reach out to the banks they will reach out to the people and, and and it will get it done but what we saw during this cash crunch was uh even the banks were not uh, uh able to cater for the kind of outcry they got so it's, it's it's a bigger landscape now right so it's not just the banks so we saw fintechs coming in to save the day we saw agency banking players coming in to save the day we saw even the telco led uh, uh, players like uh, uh, psbs so the conversation should be expanded now when the cbn is trying to reach out down to the people because of course i'll, I'll tell you that most times some of all these policies work for the already banned customers i didn't have a lot of issues because I, I could use my apps i could use multiple bank apps if one is down but angela or maman kechi in oshu state may have had issues she may not have been able to have multiple bank apps she may not have been on any app maybe the best uh, uh, kind of financial uh, interaction she has had with is the umbrella person close to her house where mm. she just goes there mm. uh, with her card for pay cash in and cash out so the communication and, and, and commun the communication has to be expanded the arms that the cbn has to make this kind of policies and implement them successfully should go beyond the banks the fintechs are there uh the agents mobile money agents are there uh the psbs are there and all other players in this ecosystem so that when you drive this type of initiative because all these extended arms even go way lower it's not just lagos Portacot, abuja these people have umbrellas in pocket Pene. they have umbrellas in the local areas the reach is better uh the 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 people that are less privileged to interact with this ecosystem are able to find some form of solace in the fact that yes cbn is putting out this policy 
and I'm not affected adversely. I'm included in the conversation. All right. I go to the umbrella stand close to my house and it's able to give me some form of way to go around this whole process. And then everybody will be fine. Um, I think that's that, that's the first one. The extended arms and tentacles of the CBN should go beyond just the banks because the banks don't even go to some rural areas. So you should extend further to other players uh, in the ecosystem. And then the second one is, is technology. I think we need to make sure our technology is right. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that hurt people the most when they were using with when they were interacting with all these uh, digital channels is when I try to pay, the transaction fails, my money is debited, and I don't even get the reversal. So if that's the only money I have in my account, I'm in a fix. So it's very important that even not just banks, everybody, any each of these players have outlined uh, initially should make sure that the technology stack is okay um you, you try to mention one that was kind of applauded during this whole session and that's just because they put out a a, a, a memo they had increased and expanded their own technology yeah. cloud database to just accommodate that info so that's a forward-thinking institution i think everybody should just uh follow that same process because we need to believe in the system you can't push us today nothing is as easy as cash right i just hand put, put the, my hand in my pocket and i give you the money transaction done so if you're telling us to move away from cash and go into other forms of payment, it has to be as swift as cash. No interruption, no failures, nothing. As easy, because that's what makes people just have that easy uh, movement to, 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 the, to the cashless uh, uh, divide. So I think uh, uh, Tony Michelle has really touched on most of the things, but those two things to me should speak first in terms of what next. CBN have other tentacles and other players in the system so that they can help you drive your message. And then for all these players, just make sure your technology is up to date and then we can reduce flow, uh, failures and have more trust in, in the system. Thanks. Thank you so much, Elvis you and Tumishi. Before we go, since Dami is a nice person, he will do a recap. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, number one thing, communicate. Communication was not up to par yeah. in this period. You just said we should redesign. get better do whatever you want to do mm -hmm. kill yourself <laughs> then time time yeah, the is time also man. very important the time limit the time frame given for this policy irrespective of how good the policy was it just wasn't timing <laughs> and you know it needs to it be considered it wasn't given <laughs> at all <laughs> then there's also the aspect where for policies like this going forward cbn should bring all players to the table exactly and there should be a concise conversation about how the policy would go how it will be rolled out and everything so everybody's on the same page and nobody's caught pants yeah. down and all of that then of course they should be humble enough to say okay guys we made a mistake with this uh, but going forward we're going to learn from our mistakes and you know take learning points and do better yeah. so yeah thank you very much no there's one more thing okay, one he more. said something around financial inclusion where they have to expand you know go to rural areas mm. he mentioned my kitchen in Oshun State. i don't know why <laughs> 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 so yes uh, they really need to expand their infrastructure it's it, this period actually taught us that banks are not even ready for the kind of um, boom that digital um, banking systems are supposed Needs, to accommodate yeah. Uh, so yeah they need to expand you know just to make sure that that's chorus financial inclusion is actually it's not people don't let that distrust you know the system. chorus itself like hey you people are not ready stop telling us to move to um, the digital um, banking yeah, system it needs to be as swift as cash yeah i remember that so once again thank you elvis and to um mm -hmm. we this conversation doesn't usually end here we usually move it to social media too so if you can drop your social media handles um so that people can follow you elvis your whichever one that you most you use mostly <laughs> I, I i use uh linkedin the most so it's elvis christopher on linkedin i think that's best just the same way it's, it's, it's here elvis christopher on linkedin oh great all right great. Tumishi. okay for me i use instagram also use LinkedIn. so my instagram is to underscore omali and then uh, my linkedin is also on Tumishi omali hmm. Hmm. Right. on instagram to show omali I mean, we have simple names like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, Rios. thank you. Okay, mine. Mine is um. Okay, I use LinkedIn, uh, but I also use Twitter. So on Twitter, I am um, Lord Ricky. That's Lord underscore R I C K I E. Um, like I said I also use LinkedIn, which is Omole Omori on LinkedIn. Yeah, mine is Actdown07 on Twitter, Instagram, 
then LinkedIn or what damn like I can All right. Thank right. you again. And I've said this is like Technext, <laughs> Tech Bytes by Technext. You can follow Technext on all platforms at technext.ng, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. TikTok. And follow Everywhere. our podcast. Listen to it too. Yes, yes, yes. As I said earlier, this is podcast 31. It's episode 31. So you can binge listen to the other 30 episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, trust me, they are, they've been insightful. I was listening to the last one and I was like, and I was going to tell the guest again that thank you for joining us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was really insightful. So yes, uh, we have come to the end of this. Um, and uh, we'll meet again next week. Thank you to the guests for joining us and thank you to all of you for listening in and watching. Um, until we meet again next week. Take care. Enjoy the holidays. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too.